Hi there, it's Thursday and we are here on a very momentous day. Today is the 142nd birthday of Grace Ingalls and I just have to say that this extraordinary woman changed my life <laughs> forever and I am just so um, honored to wish her a happy birthday today and that I get to kind of experience what it was like to be Grace. So, hey Polly, how's it going dude? Nice to see you. Um, anyway, so happy birthday to Grace. I was going to go out and get like a cupcake or something and have a little mini birthday party. <laughs> but I'm allergic to flour, so I can't really eat cupcakes. So uh, no cupcake today. Sorry about that. But um, hi, Sally and Johnny and Patty and June. Thank you for being with me today. Um, so yes, it's birthday for Grace Ingalls, which is super amazing. Um, we won't talk too much about her because I will save that for another week. But what we are talking about today is Radimus Para, Para, however everyone says it different. Um, and I'm so excited for Radimus to come to Walnut Grove this summer. Um, this event is going to be amazing. I was talking to Amy the other day from the museum and she has so many things planned. There's, it's going to be so exciting things that we, you know, haven't done before. So it's going to be really, really fun. Oh my goodness. Thank you. There's so many people watching. Thank you so much. Annie and Cindy and Emily and Mar. I think I'm saying that right. Um, thank you for watching today. Um, so anyway, we're just going to do a little bit about Radimus today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed some of the pictures I posted. I mean, I just posted what my favorites were, but you know, everyone has other things that they like about Radimus. Um, and I tune in to the blog post tomorrow and I share a little story about Radimus and what he means to me. And I'm not going to go into that today so that you will actually read the blog post. So, um, but I'm just going to talk about Radimus for a little bit here. Radimus had like an incredible career. Um, so he started when he was eight years old. He landed his first role when he was eight in a movie called The Dream of Kings. And I have to tell you, I have not seen it, but I need to put that on my list of things to see. So that was his first role. And then at 12 years old, he landed the role of Grasshopper on the TV series Kung Fu. And I did not watch this. I was too young. Um, but my husband watched it and he could not believe when I told him that Radimus was Grasshopper. He was just like, what, what? So he's, uh, my husband is half Chinese. And so they watched lots of martial art movies when they were young, when he was young. And so he was all into that. Um, so he did that for, um, a couple years and then he got the role of John Jr. For Little House of the Prairie at 14 years old. And, you know, somebody was saying something about how Kung Fu was after, was after um, Little House. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. He was way, way, way younger in Kung Fu. Um, but sometimes, you know, they can, the movies, they know how to like make you look younger or older or whatever. So um, anyway, so after Little House, now it's always a story with, with Radimus is that he was just this sweet, sweet kid. And he played the darlingest role of John Jr., just the sweetest boy. And then he, you know, breaks Mary's heart. <laughs> and he's like, I not mean, I didn't mean to do that. They wrote it in the script, you know. So poor John Jr. just gets drugged through the mud for being the jerk to Mary. <laughs> Two timing. Um, and then all of a sudden he like gets murdered and 
Radimus tells a story, and he'll probably tell at the reunion just because he tells a story a lot. Um, hi, Kelly and Babs and Johnny and Carolyn. Thank you. Um, and Danny and Jennifer. I see you too. Um, and Bill. Anyway, um, he tells a story of how he contacted Michael Landon to say, hey, what if John Jr. came back on the show for like a guest appearance and da da da. And um, <laughs> so he contacts Michael and he says that. And then Michael's like, ooh, well, that's not going to work. John Jr. just got murdered last, a couple weeks ago on the season. And he, she, and he was like, what? She just like totally took away um, that possibility. And he tells it way better. So I'll just leave that story for Radimus to tell. But it's so funny how he tells that story. And just when you think like, oh, I could totally be back on the show for a little bit. And then, oh, you just got killed. So it was like the only way that he could come back is if he like came back from the dead or something. And so <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, there's Radimus. He had a very, um, a lot of acting early on. Um, and after Little House, he did a few other films and some short little TV stuff. Um, but then he left Hollywood because... This is the truth. Child actors have a really hard time transitioning from being a kid on TV to having an adult role because everyone still thinks of them as that little kid. So it's hard to get a serious adult role. So Radimus kind of went through that same thing. And so he ended up starting his own business of... Um, designing and installing like theater and um um like music like uh, home theater equipment um and he did it in like some of the like huge stars uh homes and things um anyway so he did that and then he Moved to Portland, Oregon for about 10 years doing that. And I love Oregon. Oregon's awesome. Um, and then he moved to Austin, Texas for another 10 years and did that as well. And um, I think the first time I met him was when he was living in Texas. So, yeah. But now, Radimus is living in France he married the sweetest lady ever, and he married her, uh, met her at a little house event, and they got married, and they have an adorable little girl, and so they're living in France, and um, I think that one of the hardest things about staying connected with the little house family is that we all are just all over the place. And so um, I have not seen Radimus for over three, over three, it was 2016. March of 2016 was the last time I saw Radimus. So that was right before his daughter was born and right before they moved to France. So I just can't wait to give Radimus just a big hug because he's just such a great, great, great guy. So yeah, anyway, um, that's pretty fun. I did talk to Radimus um, over um, text and asked him if it was okay if I shared some things with you and um, asked him if I could share this one little tidbit is that he is working and has been working on a memoir for a long time. And I am anxiously awaiting that to get to print <laughs> so we can actually read it. So Radimus has a, some great stories from his time on television, but he also has very deep sweet, um, just loyal, um, reflective self. And I'm very, very excited to see that come to fruition here.
pretty soon, I hope. I'm not quite sure about the timeline, but I just wanted to like throw that out there. Um, all of the cast people that have written books, they're amazing. And you just get this window into their souls a little bit more than what you see on the screen. And I could not be more excited to see that in a book form um, about Radimus. So that's very exciting. Um, let's see what else I was going to say. Oh, okay. So I wanted to share my favorite episode, which is probably everybody's favorite episode of John Jr. Um, I love this episode. It's I'll Ride the Wind from season three. And this is when John Jr. is dreaming of becoming a writer. Now, obviously, this totally hits home with me because I have been dreaming of being a writer for the last three and a half years since I had brain surgery. And when I watch this episode, I just get all emotional. Um, he's dreaming of becoming a writer and he gets a letter in the mail saying that this magazine wants to publish his poems. And he immediately thinks that he's gonna be a writer, he's gonna get paid for doing what he loves. And so he proposes to Mary right there. Like, talk about giving us some thought, right? He just proposes to her right away. And they make all these plans um, not even knowing what the magazine really wants to do. Um, and so then a representative from the magazine comes out and instead of offering to pay for his poems, they offer a full scholarship for him to go to college. And that is huge because back then people didn't go to college. Like, they didn't. They didn't go to college. And so it was a huge opportunity for him. And he has to make the choice to go to college or to stay and marry his fiance now, Mary. And I just think it's amazing. Um, yeah, I really think it's amazing. So that is definitely my favorite episode of um, Rodimus. Um, and he does make the right choice, I think. Um, he does. He makes the right choice. And, um, yeah. So there is a quote that I use from that episode in my book. And I will not share it with you. But it's just a little teaser for you. So it's very, very fun. Um, and... Man, I think that you've just run me dry here. I think that's about it for today. I, my mind is kind of exploding today. There's a lot of things happening. Um, a lot of things happening with the reunion, a lot of things happening with marketing on the book and oh my goodness, I am exhausted. Like I think I need a nap. Um, the other thing is that my daughter has been gone all week to science camp and she gets home in about 20 minutes. So I do need to go and pick her up. Um, but it has been a very eventful week. <laughs> and um, I am so excited that we got together today to talk about Radimus and that you will see him this summer in Walnut Grove and I know for some of you, you're like, I'm not going to Walnut Grove. And I totally understand. And we are going to just live this thing for you. And we're going to share things. I'm going to be on videos. And I did a pretty good job in Missouri, but I am totally planning on being even more attentive and even more um, trying to bring you guys along so you get to experience this completely amazing, amazing anniversary of the best show in the whole world, Little House on the Prairie. So um, let's see, connect with me on my website, 
wendyluli.com. You can get all of my blog posts there. You can subscribe to my newsletter and my um, weekly updates as far as my blog posts. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Wendy Luli. You can find me on Facebook. Um, my page is Wendy Turnbaugh as Baby Grace or my regular profile page, Wendy Lou Lee. We are getting close to the $5,000, $5,000, 5,000 <laughs> uh, friend limit. So there are only about 800 more that I'm going to be able to take and then it will be capped. So if you want to be a friend on my profile, better snag it quick. Um, if not, which is fine, go to my page, Wendy Turnbaugh's Baby Grace, and that's where everyone will be directed after that 5,000 limit gets reached. So yes, the other thing is I do have a YouTube channel that I post all these silly videos on Wendy Lou Lee. Just search for that. There you'll find it. So yes. Um, the last thing is I, um, I'm so excited about, I have honestly like six weeks to go and we'll be at the reunion. My book will be available. I'm just over the moon excited. Um, please support me if you can and come to the reunion. Um, the books are on pre-order, but you can also wait till they come out and that's fine too. So, um, I thank you all for being such wonderful friends and being with me today. And I will say sayonara and I will see you next week. Okay. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.